Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As promised, I said I was going to do a long form cleaning video so that way we can clean together and that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to clean my house from start to finish on my little checklist, I'll go over that in a minute. I'm breaking a few of my spring cleaning rules, but I wanna make sure I give as much content as possible for an actual, realistic, clean with me style video. I said I was going to make some printables and I attached them in the description box to my last spring cleaning specific video, and that was this one right here. I've already filled it out for my house specific. I will zoom in on it in a second in case you wanna see exactly what's on my list. I already did check off the living room because that's what we did in that video, as well as tons of tips to make spring cleaning a little bit easier or faster in your home. I'm still working on learning how to do these. Like you could see, this was a mop. It's not there anymore, so if yours printed that way, I apologize, but I'm still learning on that. But like for me, I'm gonna be starting in my entryway, so these are the things specific to mine. And then for the bathrooms, because I have two, I split the boxes in half. We have four bedrooms, so I have four tiny little boxes to check everything off as I go. But if you wanna know exactly what I have for each little block, here is what mine looks like. The first place I will start is in my entryway. When I said I was gonna break a few of my spring cleaning rules, I believe in full-blown tidying first before you do any spring deep cleaning. I'm going to be doing both together because for one, it will get me a longer video for you guys to clean with me, so I will also be tidying. But if you're going to be doing just the spring cleaning projects, tidy first. And the other thing, I like to make sure I have a basket of some kind with me so that way I will have all of my cleaners, gloves, bags, extra rags, anything I could want while I'm cleaning, I will have it with me. I will show you once I fill it up. This is just my very old laundry basket, very cracked <laughs> old laundry basket. It is from the 2008 collection at Target. It was for my baby shower with Aiden, of all things, way back in the day, but a basket full of your supplies. Here's a look at my basket. This will be going room to room with me, so no, it doesn't have all the stuff I'll be using in the kitchen because my cleaner closet is right here in the kitchen, so I'm not worried about all the extra stuff. This is mostly what I'm gonna need in the bedrooms. So I've got my gloves, I've got some antibacterial wipes, a multi-surface cleaner, glass cleaner, magic eraser, have to have one of those some extra bags just for trash, and a lot of rags with extra space in case I find things that need to go to a different room, I could put them right there. This basket would also be home to my six foot little extended Swiffer for cleaning today, but I have no pads. My kids used the last of them and did not tell me that we were out, so I have a different trick for dusting the walls today. You guys know I love my Swiffer. It makes all the mirrors and glass in my house a lot faster. Well, today we're also gonna use it for dusting the walls. This is just a dry refill pad. It actually traps all the dust and stuff up on your walls. And I got a second one in case it gets too dirty, but those will be what I use today for that. Basket in hand, let's get started. I personally love cleaning marathon videos, and that's why I like making these for you guys, because for me, when I don't have any motivation to clean, I do have specific YouTubers that I watch, and I'll put on their longer cleaning videos, or at least hopefully have videos that come on back to back to back, so that way I don't have to touch the buttons, and I could just let it go in the background while I'm cleaning and scrubbing my entire house. I can listen to them, and their music and their words and just use that as my motivation and my drive to get what I need done around my house. My plan for when I started filming this video, I told myself I want at least a one hour long video. That was all I was shooting for. Well, it took me three days of filming to get all of the work done on my checklist throughout my house for spring cleaning and that's the checklist I shared in the last video. Well, <laughs> when I was done and I was editing this video, I had over three and a half hours of footage that I had to minimize and break down for you guys. I was had no intentions on that long. My goal was one hour. You guys are actually getting almost two. It is literally five minutes shy of a two hour cleaning video. What I'm doing in the entryway that you've already seen, I have that window above my door that does not get cleaned near enough. So I was working on that and then wiping down all of the doors, the handles, the light sockets, all that stuff. Anything that gets touched a lot, I was definitely making sure to hit with the antibacterial wipes. 
and just get this whole area cleaned up really nice. And then for the walls, I didn't actually mop them. I normally will go behind and mop them. This time I just dust them. Oh, and Gwen drew me a beautiful picture. So I had to stop and enjoy my cute little pictures from her and then continue on. I'm using these little dry dusters on the walls. I was honestly shocked. I knew that it would get the dust off my walls. I had no idea how much dust and dirt were actually on my walls. And when I did all of this front entry area and I took it down and turned and looked at it, it was no longer white in any way, shape or form. There was so much dust and stuff on my walls. And I'm kind of wishing that I would have gone back and mopped the walls. But one, I did not have a new mop head. And that's why I will also not be mopping the cabinets in this video i will explain the cabinets later but for the walls i didn't have a fresh mop head and i could not find my actual reusable cleaning head look look at that look at the color on that thing absolutely disgusting but i could not find my flat little pad that goes on this to where i could have mixed up a solution to wash the walls so i will be going back and eventually doing that it's just not happening in this particular video but I would normally map the walls. I do want to talk about for a minute. Do you see all of the little confetti pieces up here on my wall? It's gonna blur, but yeah, that's all confetti from the other day. I played an April Fool's prank on Connor with one of them cannons, and it's still on my roof. It went everywhere. This is the little side cabinet in my kitchen. I was right here when I shot the little cannon thing. So there's confetti everywhere. There's even some on this little wall. I'm hoping it sticks to that Swiffer pad. Short little music break there for a second, but what I wanted to do for this video was a good mix of music to help you guys get motivated to clean, but still me talking and you know that I'm here, but there will be more spaces than normal. I mean, it's two hours. I've got plenty of stories to talk to you guys about, but that's a lot of talking. Like right here, Gwen, she kept following me around on this particular day, wanting to clean with me. She asked if she could do the walls. Of course, I was gonna let her, but every time I tried to ask her if I could have it back, she's like, no, not yet. I'm still working, I'm still cleaning, and she just kept wanting to work with me, so all throughout the video, you may catch her cleaning along with me too. This little heart right here drawn in the paint, I'm trying to get a magic eraser to get it off first. I got about 90% of it, but it is pencil, and it is really, really etched in my paint. So I went back behind it, I'm not showing you, this is why I'm talking about it. I went behind it with like a school eraser, and got the rest of it out of there, but it was really, really dug in the paint. And then I took that same magic eraser and a microfiber behind it and went and cleaned up any spots all over the walls because I wasn't mopping them. And you'll see some of the spots where it looks really gross. This door in particular and that wall in this hallway, this is where Hunter sleeps. And for some reason, every wall this dog sleeps against gets this ugly, nasty, gray, dirty sheen. So I have to make sure to clean it really well. I've got to coax him into moving, of course, because he doesn't ever want to get up. My little old man, he's like eight years old. He's almost nine. So he doesn't want to do much these days. But this door where he really lays against, it gets so, so nasty. checking a few things that I've completed off of the checklist. And then you'll see all of this Easter decor is still here. I left it up for way longer than I normally do, but that's what I'm doing through some of this video. You'll see me taking down some Easter decor. And this egg was one of the ones we could not find. Didn't know it was back there stuck behind that sign. So at least now we know where all of the eggs were because that was the last remaining one that we didn't know where it was. But cleaning down this front table, getting rid of the Easter decor, and just really scrubbing up the entryway.
My finishing steps in the entryway are the floors and the area rug down there, but because all the bedrooms are in this same hallway, I don't wanna do the floors just yet. That is always my closing step. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to another room. The first room I'm gonna do is the boys' room. This is Aiden and Declan's room. It is not tidy, I will go ahead and say that. It's kinda still got a bunch of stuff I've gotta do first before the deep cleaning projects, but not a whole lot either. I've talked about this ceiling fan trick a lot on my channel with the pillowcase and you put on the blade and hold it to it really tight and then pull it away. That trick failed me in this video. When I go into the girls room, I tried using the exact same pillowcase and I don't know if the boys fan was just extra dirty and gross and then the girls was too and just the combination, but I tried one blade in the girls room and just got so much dust in my face, I quit with that trick right then and there. These LEDs that you see me pulling off the walls, these were in here since Tristan had this room, but he moved out of it almost two years ago at this point. When we first moved in, Tristan had this front bedroom and then the two boys had the one across the hall. Well, one day Tristan was home from school and the other two were still there. And he's like, you know what, mom, I would really like to trade rooms. And he's like, and I'll do it. I'll do all the work while the kids are in school, kind of like a fun surprise for them to come home to a traded bedroom. So that's exactly what him and I did. We spent that entire time when the kids were at school moving boys' bedrooms. It took so long. It was absolutely a nightmare. But Tristan does prefer the other room. And then this one is just a slight bit bigger. So it's better for them to share. Anyways, this picture I'm showing you was Hunter's. We put the canvas in a, a Ziploc bag, covered it in peanut butter, and had paint in there and let him lick it and make the artwork. It was a lot of fun, but I was showing you because I don't think I've talked about that in a very long time. And it was covered in dust, so disgusting. All these shelves were really, really nasty. But these shelves were also Tristan's, which is why they're where they are. They don't kind of make sense with the bunk bed and everything. There was another shelf on this wall as well, which we had to take down to make room for the bunk beds when we switched rooms. It was a process that could have taken more thought if we wouldn't have just jumped to it to do it in one day's time. We're gonna play story time today, I guess, to get through two hours worth of talking and keeping you guys motivated to clean. I'm just gonna tell you all kinds of different stories to go along with my kids, like the bunk bed right there. Declan has the top. He originally had the bottom. I like to keep the younger kids on the bottom just in case, you know, they're not being crazy on the top or wrecking, like rolling over, just keeping them safer on the bottom. Well, Aiden, he likes to play on the TV games and stuff sitting on the floor. He just prefers that. And then when he gets tired, he quote, wants to roll onto his bed and go to sleep. So he kind of like does this weird little crawling maneuver from the floor to the bottom bunk and then passes out for the night. So he actually has the bottom bunk in this room and Declan has the top with all of his extra stuffed animals in that net that was up there. He keeps like taking them out, putting them back up, throwing them all over the house and never using the net more than like 25% of the time, defeating the whole purpose of it being up there and trying to keep this room clean. It's a nightmare. I'm not even worried about making Declan's bed because it's just not worth it but I am going to make Aiden's, and you see Hunter down here. This is where he sleeps all day long unless he's against that door. For anyone that's new and you're going to ask, why don't my kids clean up their own rooms? Why am I doing it? Why am I assisting? My kids do clean their bedrooms, but my youngest son, he just turned eight, and my youngest daughter, she just turned five. So I do like to help the younger ones. I don't do the entire bedroom for them start to finish, but I will help my children out. I'm not going to put the entire burden 
on them. If I have the free time and I'm available, I'm going to assist them because for one, it will get done a lot faster. It's more efficient. Stuff's gonna get put in a much more organized manner if I'm actually assisting them and I'm teaching them how to do this effectively and efficiently while I'm in there with them. It's not like I'm just taking over doing it and not using it as a teaching moment, but I'm also not going to do anything where it's just like, no, go clean your room, blah, 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 blah. I'm not gonna do that with my kids because I also want the extra time to do things with them and play games and stuff. So if I can make their chores go a little bit faster, that I will also do. This whole thing on this dresser is my older son. He's 15 years old. Does he know how to clean up after himself? Absolutely. Does he always? No, he's a teenager. If you have teenagers that actually do everything they're supposed to 100% to the letter, congratulations and please share your parenting tips with me because I would desperately love them when it comes to that. But I will help my children where I can and when I can. But my goal with them is to always make sure by the time they graduate high school, they know exactly what to do when they're entering the real world. They know how to cook, clean, do things with their car, do things with finances. They understand credit cards and everything like that. My oldest son, he knows how to sew. I have taught him every single thing that I could possibly think to teach him. So when he's on his own, he knows what to do, but he also knows that if he runs into any kind of issue, pick up the phone, call mom, call dad, we've got you and we will teach you anything and everything we can. You don't see what you have I was self-taught with almost everything that I know. Like I wasn't sat down by my grandmother and given all these different cooking lessons or cleaning lessons. My mom and my dad, yes, they taught me what they could, but they were both full-time workers and we did the best that we could with the family. I had a lot more chores back in the day than my kids do now, but I also, I appreciate that I got to learn hands-on how to do all of this stuff so I could teach myself. That's why I love having a cleaning, homemaking, motherhood style channel because if there's a brand new mom that strolls across my channel and she doesn't know all the little tips and tricks that I have taught myself over the years, I can pass those along to her and help make her life a little bit easier when she's trying to handle a new baby and a new house and all these different responsibilities that she suddenly has. If I can make one part of her day happier, easier, less lonely, anything whatsoever, that is one thing that I love with this outlet and with YouTube. Because there's been numerous times I've gone to YouTube because there was something I didn't know how to do and I wanted to find it. Or I was looking for other people like myself and watching videos like those. So that is what I do really, really love about my channel is being able to help anyone else that is just looking for it. Now back to things that I wish my grandmothers would have taught me. My two grandmothers are night and day different. My dad's mom, she was a German lady straight out of New York. And she, like all of her recipes were straight good German recipes. One of my favorite things that she made was potato pancakes and these little cookies that she makes at Christmas time. Now my other grandmother is so southern backwoods woman i love her so much and she makes all the really good rustic country style recipes and i have cards and recipe cards from both of these ladies and i know some of their recipes but neither one have actually been able to sit down and just give me all those wonderful you know grandma taught me these style recipes I have their cards and that's about as best as I've got except for a few childhood memories on how to do those things. Cooking is another area where I've pretty much taught myself everything I can. My parents both worked, like I told you, so there was a lot of nights my mom, once I was a teenager, she would tell my brother and myself what's for dinner and we would make it. It was always pretty simple stuff, but I got a good basis for what I needed to learn how to cook certain items and then just roll with it 
And then I moved out when I was 19. I had my first apartment. So I had to learn everything from scratch on being on my own. So I really just like dove into cleaning and how to do it and cooking and how to do it. And especially like all the fun little baking snacks and things. As soon as I got pregnant with my first son, Tristan, I was like, ooh, how can I do fun holidays, fun birthdays, fun all these different things that you see online? I wanted to know how to make them. I've always been more of a creativity, hands-on driven person. So I definitely got into the cooking and I love cooking. I almost went to Le Cordon Bleu at one point, but you know, then I got pregnant and trying to smell all those different smells all day long was just not going to work for me. So I went another route with that, but I still never lost that love of being in the kitchen. So I teach myself everything that I can. I still watch cooking shows and Food Network all the time just for fun teaching myself. Even if you try, you wouldn't understand it. Maybe something's missing inside of you. Just a bit of sugar to that hobbit bitter. Maybe you taste different. Hold up, hold up, babe. The boys carpets are finished. I need that to dry, but while I have the machine here, I do need to do this rug. So I'm gonna go ahead and just vacuum and do the cleaner part of this rug. I'm not doing the tile, grout, or anything to do with the floors because I do still have to do the guest bathroom, which is right there. And then this door belongs to our oldest, Tristan. Sometimes he's good being filmed, but other times he's not, and that is his room, his domain. So respecting him, we're just gonna leave that completely off camera. Earlier I got to talking and I didn't mention the vacuum that I'm using. You might be wondering why I'm not using the cordless vacuum. It's not as strong and if I'm gonna sit here and do the carpets fully, I want my strongest vacuum that I have and that happens to be the one that plugs into the wall. Plus, this carpet cleaner, I adore this thing. It is so great but the bottom part if there's any dog hair, cat hair, dust, dirt, it will stick up underneath it. So I like to get as much hair and gross off of these rugs as I can before I ever use the machine. Like you see the dog hair pushing out of this thing from the boys room. It will throw piles of hair all over the place as I'm cleaning and you have to stop and pick that up. So I just try to be as thorough as possible with the vacuum before ever going into the actual machine. This thing though does wonders. My rugs get ridiculously clean and the fact that it has the upholstery attachment, this is one of my absolute favorite cleaning products in my house. Hold up, hold up, baby. I can sit beside you while you're going on about your simple life. Nothing left you thinking that maybe you're not different. I'm gonna work on the girls' bedroom next before I work on the bathroom, but I want the spray in the shower specifically to sit the entire time I'm doing the girls' room. So I am jumping in here, just spraying that and letting it sit for probably a good 40 minutes while it's gonna take me to the girls' room. I got this boy on my mind that I can't live without, always eyes I can be. And he keeps talking about everything that he likes And I can't stop listening I'm thinking about him all the time I'm thinking about him all the time Does anyone else remember this can being by Kaboom and not by OxyClean? Because I swear I'm losing my mind. I could have sworn I bought the color-changing spray by Kaboom. But no, now I go looking in the store and this is the only one there and it is OxyClean. It still smells the same, looks the same, acts the same, so I'm just going to assume this is Kaboom in this can. But I'm gonna go off of that rant for a minute because that was bugging me. When I'm speaking of cleaning products, it's gonna take me on to another little cute story time. My daughter, by the way, if you see her little toys there, those are Disney Dorbles. She is obsessed. She has an entire gallon-sized bag of them, and every time we go to the store, she will try to talk me into more. She just loves them so much and she will put them all over the room. 
categorized by their movie. Like you'll see all the Little Mermaid ones together, frozen together. It's absolutely adorable that she does that. And that, that wasn't my story that I was gonna tangent off to either, but I got there too. While cleaning her room, I'm gonna talk about my experience with cleaning. I know a lot of you are like, oh, she's a cleaning channel. She's gotta know every in and out. She must have been a house cleaner or something. At one point, I thought about starting my own house cleaning business, but I've had kids since I was 20 years old. I haven't really had time to be running my own business, so I just, I've never done that, but I do have the knowledge and the skills to do it because, again, it is another part of my life that I was self-taught. I love testing out products and testing out tips and cleaning tricks. If I had a problem in my house, I wanted to know how to solve it. So that's just why I dove down that rabbit hole and made sure I knew how to do those things. I knew how to do laundry properly so I didn't ruin any of my clothes because I didn't have a whole lot of money to be going out and buying all these brand new clothes if, God forbid, I shrank something in my dryer or just ruined anything. And yeah, my face here is what I was talking about earlier. With all that dust, I gave up and I got the wand that cleans these blades. I love product testing. I love different hack testing and I have been bit by it, which is why I make sure to test them before I ever tell them to you guys or share them with you. But I love to be able to share stuff like that with you. One that bit me really, really hard years ago, I was told there's this blue toilet bowl cleaner from the dollar store and you could go in there and use it on the grout in your shower. Yeah, no, it was not gonna make my shower grout beautifully white. It made it beautifully blue. And it stained it for the longest time. And the smell was so strong. I was lucky that bathroom had a window. Both of my bathrooms in my current house, no window. I would have had to pass out from that smell. And then it took me four or five times bleaching out my grout and almost ruining my grout in my shower because I listened to some random hack that was supposed to be wonderful instead of just testing it in a small little inconspicuous space. This is another reason why I test products and I test hacks so you guys don't ruin your home. And you know that my channel, I am very honest with you and I'm going to make sure that you know exactly what you're getting into. If there's a product that gags me and just I'm not comfortable with, I'm gonna share that and make sure you know. So in case you're an asthmatic or you're just sensitive to scents, you will not go and buy that product because you now know that it's not safe for you. I do always apologize when I clean windows on this channel because the lighting gets so bad. It's nothing else that I can help. I've tried different angles. It just messes with the lighting. So I do apologize if that does anything for your eyes. I just don't like it. I will make sure when I do cl deep clean the windows that I'm cleaning the inside and the outside. And I could do that with these. If I can't, I add that to my list for all exterior stuff, I will add the windows because most of the dirt and stuff I'm about to show you on this rag came from the exterior side of the window, not the interior, but that's also why that rag looks so horrible is because I was able to clean the outside and that is a little alleyway between the houses on that window. So it just gets really, really gross in there. And then the girls still don't listen and I tell my youngest not to take food and drinks into her bedroom and she ends up spilling them or one of the kittens will go in here and they love to tip cups. So their carpet always looks so gross. We do want to rip up all of the carpeting in the house because we have tile in all the main living areas and then every bedroom is carpeted and the cats have ruined the entryway to each bedroom with their nails. So it needs to be done anyways. We're debating putting the tile that looks like wood floor 
in all of the bedrooms. We just haven't done it yet because it's gonna be a very large job and it's expensive. So that is eventually on our list, but for now I'm gonna do everything I can to keep the carpets looking as good as possible. They are still really, really rough, especially in the kids' room though. But like I said, doing the best we can at keeping them looking somewhat good. And I do use Folex on anything as soon as it spills to clean it up to try and mitigate the damage. On somewhere on this girl's floor, there was eyeshadow, like a black eyeshadow. The Folex even took that out. It was amazing. And then this carpet cleaner, there was something behind my feet right now. If you see it in front of that purple and white square right behind my feet, whatever that was, this steam cleaner also took that out. in case i forget to mention it during the voiceover i am skipping a few things like it says on my list furniture 360 a lot of the kids furniture pieces i cannot move to clean all the way around them like that bunk bed it's not movable that little table i actually just put in here not that long ago so i don't have to move that around and all of the kids dressers are wall mounted ikea's got this thing where you need to wall mount them and yeah hi gwen so I'm ignoring the Furniture 360. I'm wiping down the furniture, but I can't actually move it and get around it. And you know, if you can, that's the best thing you can do when you deep clean is move all your furniture. But if you can't move it, you know, don't worry about it. The other thing I was gonna mention as she's crawling into her bed, all of the bedding, if I did not say that in voiceover, all of the bedding is getting washed over the next couple days. Trying to wash all of it while I'm doing all this deep cleaning would be an absolute nightmare. And no one would have dry sheets for bed. So that is all being done on different days as the week comes up. That is when all that will be done. And the other reason why I don't wanna wash any of that today is because I'm going to do the laundry room and deep clean the washer and the dryer, which takes time as well. So just, it's not worth it and it's not going to work with today's schedule to do all the bedding today. I have a love-hate relationship with this electric scrub brush. It does a good job. If I push down a little too hard to try and help it out though, it will stop working altogether. And then it likes to get tangled in the little extender piece that hangs off my shower head. It gets all tangled up in there. You'll see me fight it a couple times. So does it do a good job? Yes. Does it help me out and save time? Yes. But is it also frustrating? Absolutely. So I'm just, I'm still torn between this thing and either like a Dollar Tree broom because I've used those or even that little flat scrubber thing of mine. I still love that too. Oh, just be Being me. 
this shower is pretty difficult to clean because you see the ledge from the bathtub up to the wall where it's got that about an inch and a half to two inch gap down there. It gets mold up under there. We've already recalked it like three times. I try to find anything I can use. If you have any tips, if you have something like this in your bathroom and you have any, any tricks at all that you've used to stop that area from molding, please let me know because it has been a nightmare trying to keep that clean and I will take anything to make that easier. Now moving on to the shower head, I've got my electric scrub brush, another thing I absolutely have to have. I love that stupid thing. I'm just spraying it with Kaboom, let it sit for a second, and now I'm using this. I do have these little picks that are meant to go in the holes of your shower head to clean them out. I don't know what's wrong. They don't fit in this particular shower head or the one in my master bathroom. I tried both of them again, it didn't work, but the scrub brush did a really good job and cleaned the shower head nicely, as well as those little picks were able to get in like, there's a flat line, it's about an inch long on each shower head. I was able to get in there and really clean out any of the hard water that got stuck in there. These are more Easter decorations I'm taking out. I took a few off of Gwen's mirror in her room. I didn't mention that, but I did. And then this was like the biggest part is cleaning up under these faucets. I wish I would have moved the camera closer for this one in particular, because as soon as I got up underneath there, there was so much black and gross that came off. I typically clean these about every month, if not every other month, I like to get up under there. I haven't cleaned this one in probably three or four months, and the amount of crap that came off it was just absolutely appalling. A big thing when I'm deep cleaning the bathrooms, and it's not just spring clean, I tend to do this probably four times a year, if not a little bit more, is snaking my drains. This drain snake came from the Dollar Tree, and it's still going really strong. I just clean it after I use it. No need to buy one of them expensive ones, just save yourself time. But look at all of the hair and crap that comes out of the drain. I do this to all the sinks in my house, well the bathroom sinks, and I will do this to the drain in the kid's tub, and you'll see that one in just a minute, the amount of color and dirt and just ugh that came out of that drain was absolutely disgusting. I stopped putting the footage so you guys didn't see it all because it was absolutely just disgusting and I couldn't leave it in here for you guys. I didn't want y'all to gag. But now I'm putting baking soda down the drain. I try and get as much of it in there as I can and then I will top it off with white vinegar with a rag directly on top of it right after I pour it to force the reaction further down into the pipe. This helps to clean out your pipes really well because yeah, I know they counteract each other, but when they're making their reaction, it will clear out your drains and then take boiling hot water right behind them. The combination of this whole thing just, it's like natural Drano works absolutely amazing. I've used this trick for years. I love it so much. And then I will do this exact same thing over into the tub drain that I was talking about. I just, I could not keep all the footage in there. It took me a good six or seven minutes to finally get everything out to where you see all of that was just me continuing to pull more and more out of there. Now I'm doing the baking soda and the vinegar trick in here before flushing down the entire thing with more boiling hot water. And you know just what to do, don't you? Boy, just be honest. A deep cleaning gem is this stuff right here. It is by Zep. It is a grout cleaner and brightener. You will see as I pour it out almost instantly, you could see the color change inside the grout. Let it sit for a minute or two and then use a scrub brush and it is like magic. The thing I will tell you, there comes with some warnings. One, this is very, very strong. If you are an asthmatic or have any, any issues, do not use this product. Use it in a well-ventilated area. Take breaks when you're using it. Wear gloves. And for the love of God, if you use this anywhere near your stainless steel, 
cover your stainless steel first because it will splatter as you're brushing it back and forth. It can splatter up onto whatever's around like your cabinet or your stove or anything like that and it will not come off. If you look at my stove very carefully on the bottom, there's spots. It's from using Zep years ago. It immediately put those dots on as soon as it made contact with the stainless steel. And as you see, I scrub it and then I go right behind it with a clean mop. There's nothing in the solution. It's just warm water to get up as much of this product as I can off the floor. And if you go behind and seal your grout, it will last even longer. But this product is just magic in a bottle. But definitely be careful. Wear gloves, well-ventilated area. Just be careful. You know that I'm a keep it cold. With you I feel a breaking rules. On the edge looking out with no parachute. You know I'm dreaming about us too. Playing around without a clue. On the edge screening out. With us it's all or nothing. The master is being completed over two days. I'm finishing up day one in here and starting day two. And the reason I'm saying that is because if I were cleaning this room from start to finish, I would be doing what I'm doing, starting from the top down, working on the ceiling fan and events on the roof, cleaning the walls, and then moving down toward the windows and the bed. First thing I would do is strip down my bed, but you won't see me be doing that right now until day two because of the washing machine and things like that. And I just, it wasn't in the cards for day one as far as timing goes, but you will see the full blown deep clean part of the mattress and all of that a little bit later in this video. That way I'm not skipping it. Don't think I'm skipping it. That all gets handled later on in this video. about bedding. I have bedding figured out when it comes to sheets and when it comes to what pillows we like and prefer. That comforter, I am still so confused and trying to figure it out. We've tried the comforter quilts. We've tried comforters, down comforters. We've tried all kinds of like bed in the bags and different ones from Marshalls and Target and Amazon. This one I believe is from Lull. It is by far my favorite one, but every single time I wash it, you see how it has the different stitching so it makes like little squares. The padding or the fluff, whatever you wanna call it, the inside of it gets rearranged and then it just never looks the same and it has little puff balls everywhere and it just, I cannot get it to look right on the bed. And then here is another question. That right there is a queen full comforter. On your bed, if you have a queen mattress, do you buy the full slash queen or do you buy the king? Because we've tried both and it's always a different size depending on the company. Sometimes it hangs on the floor, sometimes it doesn't. And then the other question is when you put it on your bed, do you put it where it is longer from the headboard to the footboard or longer from side to side. And if you've made a bed, you understand what these questions that I'm asking mean because I struggle so bad. You see all these beautifully made beds in all these different pictures and stuff online and Pinterest and my bed, yeah, I can get it to look pretty, but does it ever look like that, like magazine level pretty? No. <laughs> No, it never does, or at least not to me. And I'm fine with that, don't get me wrong. I'm perfectly fine with that. But I just don't understand if I'm putting it on the wrong way, or if it's the wrong size for my bed, if it's the texture of that specific comforter. Who knows, and I'm looking for some fun advice on what you do with yours.
My machine ran out of water and I only got half of my floor done, which is fine because I still have stuff to do in my bedroom tomorrow as far as the bedding, the mattress, all of that because I'm gonna start the linens tomorrow. The last thing I'm going to do tonight after I cook dinner is I'm going to work on the laundry room. That way I can use my washer and dryer tomorrow, but I only have the kitchen and the dining room left once I get that laundry room done because I'm not counting any of the outside stuff today. I just, I don't really wanna do that. And anything that's going on in the garage, it's too dark and cramped out there and can't film that anyways. Declan's closing doors. <laughs> but I'm gonna go cook dinner, then I'll come back, work on the laundry room, and then we will jump into day two's footage from tomorrow. Back at it, post dinner into the laundry room. I still have not updated anything in here, so we work with what we've got. Like I have this thing right here, hanging some stuff. I always hang any wet clothes on those bars and then take them down. We have all the extra stuff up there and then just normal Tide Pods and a few things down here as well as the lint bucket. But the tops of these collect so much dust and there's, I've tried, there ain't nothing I could do about that because like you can even see it on the front of this one. It's just constantly there. And then this is the air freshener for in here because obviously we can't plug in more things because that's the cat box and then this is the vacuum. My laundry room, like I said, is very small, so there's not a whole lot for me to go over. Now, I can go over what I would do if there was more things in my laundry room like a lot of yours are. Like if you have a utility sink, for example, you're going to want to clean that out the same way you would clean out your kitchen sink, scrub it down really good up underneath the faucet, do the drain work, all of that on your utility sink. I don't have one in here. Just like I would love one of those wood pieces across the top of the two machines. I don't have one, but if you do, you're going to need to dust and clean that off. I would like to clean off and organize all that stuff on the wire shelf above me. I've already organized what's in that basket and cleaned everything down as much as I could. The only other thing I need to do is go up there and just rearrange where it's all sitting. I wasn't too worried about that for this video. But like I said, if you have a bigger laundry room, that is something you do need to do is go through, yeah, look at all the dust. Go through all of your bins and stuff that you have in there. Get rid of any old products, unused products, stuff that you bought, you tried, and you're just letting it sit there and collect dust. Get rid of that stuff and let it go, as well as clean behind, between all that, your machines. I climbed up on mine, and I have one of the little pincher grabber sticks from the dollar store and I got behind there. I can't show you that because it is very hard, like I said, to film in my laundry room. It is so tiny, but I did get in there and clean behind my machines as well because there were some socks and some lint 
and all that is really a fire hazard if you leave it in there. And it's just also holding on to more dust. If you're an allergy prone person, you want to get rid of as much of that as possible. I don't really need new friends, so spend your time with me. Looking for someone who can play though, wanna hang with me. I'm not really looking for a friend, so spend your time with me. Looking for someone not afraid of. Cleaning inside the machines is actually very easy. I wipe down the inside of the doors, and if you look at this cloth, you'll see why it gets very disgusting right around that bottom part. And when I do the dryer door, it holds lint in that exact same spot. So wiping all of the doors inside and out is important. And then when it comes to inside the machine, I love the A Fresh product, but I have been out of it and I wasn't gonna buy any more. So I will go over what I did to replace that when we get there. This little bottom drain, find yours on your machine and clean it out. Just watch when I open mine up. All this water smelled horrible. It was so disgusting. And you can see some kind of wrapper and all kinds of just mold and gross. I took all that, cleaned it off, scrubbed it down really good with some Dawn and then just brought it back, put it back in there. Well, wiped down the cavity first because there was actually a little bit of gross that came out on this antibacterial wipe. But then I put it all back together and made sure to clean up the floor underneath it. And it was so much better. I do this probably two to three times a year. I could probably step that up a little bit more, but like I said, it is disgusting. The smell was atrocious. So just be prepared when you do open that thing. Have something under there to catch the liquid. Instead of A-Fresh, I'm using just baking soda. It ends up being about a half a cup that I sprinkled in there. Close the machine door and then this top tray. You can actually remove this entire tray and scrub it down if yours is gross. But this is just white vinegar I'm pouring into the fabric softener and the normal detergent because I'm not sure which one when mine is on self-clean that it's going to release. So I put it in both. It will drain out anyways and then just hit the self-clean button. If yours doesn't have that, put it on hot water on a normal cycle. It will work just fine. And then wiping down the outside of both machines before I go inside the dryer. The dryer takes a little bit more work than the washing machine if you're going to deep clean it because you have the lint trap to deal with. And if you haven't cleaned out your lint trap in a while, you definitely need to. It is a huge, huge fire hazard. And on this rag right here, I'm showing you the lint that was built up on just the door. And if it's got all this buildup, if your clothes aren't drying very quickly anymore and you've noticed it's taking longer and longer to dry your load, nine times out of 10, you have a huge buildup of lint down in your machine or in the little thing that comes out the back, you are clogged up somewhere. Your lint trap right here needs to be cleaned, even if like I obviously needed to clean it after the load too. But if I hadn't cleaned it in a while, you see all these little holes, it's got little pieces on it, and then there gets a film in there as well. So you do need to clean that entire thing very regularly with soap and water and let it dry and vacuum out your machine right here. They make all kinds of little devices, different brushes that you can get down in there. I've showed those on my channel. They have this other thing that clips onto your vacuum and really gets in there. I could not find mine to save my life, but I do have one and it works wonders, but do whatever you can to get really down in there and get as much lint out as you can. And then, like I was saying, for this lint trap thing, clean it out every time you do a load, obviously, but about at least monthly, I would say, clean this thing with soap and water because especially if you use fabric softener or those little beads, it will put a film on there that's making it harder for the lint to get through, for the air to get through. It's just causing more problems than it's worth. Save your house, save the fire and all of that, and just thoroughly clean your lint trap. Like, see how much is coming out in my sink? That's bad. Clean it a little more frequently. I'm already yelling at myself when I had to do this. I was sitting there yelling at myself, why did I wait so long to get around and cleaning this thing and giving it a thorough deep clean? So just don't be like me, clean it more frequently.
never thought that loving would be easy, but it's all for free. Won't cost a thing, so it's yours. It is day two for me, but hopefully you guys are still just right in the middle of your cleaning cycle And I'm gonna jump right back on in where I left off yesterday I had this drying on my counter overnight because you don't want to put this back in your dryer when it's wet But now I get to go put this back and wipe down the washing machine. My laundry room is very very small That's why it's kind of hard for me to film all of the laundry process for you guys because it is literally Right here. This is the door and the wall right behind it So it's a little hard for me to get the camera in certain angles for you guys when I'm doing stuff in the laundry room. But this is ready to go. And then in here, there's a tiny bit of residue, especially if you use one of the cleaner packs that's made for cleaning this. It tells you to wipe down your machine when it's done with the cycle because it will put residue in your drum. So I'm just gonna wipe it down just in case. The drum itself wasn't that bad though. There was a little residue but nothing too crazy. Put my Tide Pod and my beads back and then the air freshener. That's all I'm putting back in here right now. I'm gonna go work on the master bedroom and finish that up. into the master bedroom and I'm going to strip the bed all the way down these blue sheets they are the Milani sheets I talk about all the time they are still my absolute favorite and I have been loving having a color on my bed usually my sheets are white or some kind of gray unless it's the holidays because I do have a red for Christmas and like an orangey color for fall slash Halloween I've truly been loving this blue and I'm trying to figure out if there's another color I want for summer. If you change up your bedding per season, I would love to know what colors you transfer back and forth. Washing all this, I'm very simple. I throw the Tide Pod in. This is sheets and stuff specific, not my comforter. But I will throw in a Tide Pod, throw in a little bit of beads, not much, and a scoop of OxyClean because I still have white pillowcases and stuff and I want to get as much of the vibrant white that I can out of them. And then I will just run the normal bulky setting on my machine whenever I'm doing my bedding of any kind. If it was my comforter, I don't remember if I show me doing that one. I use liquid detergent, but we'll get back to that later. Your headboard, if you have a fabric headboard, it is collecting all of your skin cells and all of the dust. You do need to vacuum out your headboard I mean, lint rolling it is not gonna cut it. It will make it look pretty, but definitely vacuum it if you have a fabric headboard like I do. And then I have a mattress protector on here and my mattress was cleaned before I put that on. If that protector was not there and you don't have one, the easiest way to clean your mattress is just sprinkling baking soda gently all over it. Don't put huge mounds, that's unnecessary but sprinkle it all over the mattress, let it sit for a good 10, 15, 30 minutes, and then go in and vacuum it all up. It will freshen it, it will clean it, it looks great. You can also use shaving cream if you have any stains on your mattress. You can put shaving cream on there, scrub it in, and wipe it out with a wet rag, 
and it will get the stains off of your mattress. And then this is just an antibacterial wipe I'm using to clean all the wood all the way around my bed, my headboard, and along the bottoms. Normally I would use some kind of wood furniture cleaner. I don't have any on hand and I wasn't going to buy any. This is just some Lysol. It's an extra step I'm taking for the mattress protector that's on there. But I probably would do that step on my mattress too, just to give it another level of some kind of clean, fresh smell and disinfectant at the same time. Back to the antibacterial wipes like I was talking about for the, uh, the base of the bed. The wood cleaner I would use, I like Pledge. I grew up with Pledge. They have an antibacterial version. That's what I used last year in my spring cleaning video. It works really, really well. Smells good, not too strong, and gave the wood a really nice clean look. The antibacterial wipes did the exact same thing for the clean look. I have not noticed a more polished look, I will say, because those wood cleaners claim that they're, you know, they're polishing. My wood looked the same no matter what I cleaned it with, so I'm not real worried about that. And my bed, I've also had this thing for seven years, I wanna say, and it still looks fine. So clean however you wanna clean. Show me your love like it is, like it is, and open my heart like you're fearless. Steal all the gold you can get, you can get. Show me your love, leave me breathless, breathless. I could see some stuff up under my bed. I do need to go back through and go under there and clean that out again, but I cannot move that bed at all. The bed frame actually broke a little bit a couple years ago and it's got screws and nails and all kinds. We just, we cannot move that bed frame unless we're ready to move it out of the house entirely. This wall right here, this wall, I don't understand how it gets so gross. It's almost like stuff gets just splattered on it from the kids, the pets, I'm not even sure, but it was absolutely disgusting and I used the magic eraser down this entire thing to clean it. It looked so much better, almost night and day different from when I started to when I finished just with the magic eraser. This one wall was making my room look atrocious and I didn't even realize it because the next time I walked in my room, I go, wow, this room automatically looks so much better and it was that dirty wall. And under here, when I say move your furniture, this is what I mean. I have not moved this nightstand in probably a year and a half, maybe longer. And this is all the crap that was underneath it, behind it, around it. It was just awful. Something spilled down the back of the wall, all the way on that baseboard down there. Move your furniture if you can move your furniture. I can only move certain pieces. My dresser, I'm only able to move my dresser about three or four inches off of the wall. So that makes it very hard and I can't move the headboard because it will break, but both nightstands can be moved. I moved my husband's about maybe six weeks ago because we had a spill on his nightstand. I think Gwen spilled some kind of like red juice. So I had to really get in there. That's why you won't see my husband's nightstand be moved in this video. I just did it a few weeks ago and I'm glad I moved it when I did because it looked almost that bad, but there was red juice on top of all those items, including the rug. So that was a nightmare, but I did handle that already. I'm out of patience, I'm out of feels, but I guess I'm waiting around for something real. I'm going crazy, like what's the deal? Cause I want you to show me what you feel. Fearless, steal all the gold you can get, you can get. Show me your love. 
open my heart like you're fearless. Steal all the gold you can get, you can get. Show me your love, leave me breathless, breathless. I've always loved my bedroom furniture and then I got really big onto bedroom inspiration on Pinterest a couple weeks ago and I've seen where a lot of people don't have matching bedroom furniture anymore like this was an entire set I bought it off of a website it was either Ashley or rooms to go I can't remember which one I think it was rooms to go either way I bought the entire set together but I've noticed more and more things, they don't have matching nightstands to headboards to dressers anymore. And I'm trying to figure out if this is an older trend to have all this matching stuff. And now it's you know better to have it where it's mismatch and adds a little bit more color. Like the one I saw, the headboard was very similar coloring to mine. It was different shades of gray, but the dresser was non-existent. I think they had one built into their closet and the nightstands were white. They were taller than mine, slightly bigger than mine, so there was more space and everything in them. They had mirrors on the wall behind each nightstand. It just, the whole thing looked really cool and it was interesting, but it's making me curious if it's just like a trending thing for right now or if this is just old school, basically what I've got because I've always, you know, that's how I was raised, matching bedroom furniture. So I wasn't sure if this is a phase that's dying out and this new thing is just mismatch. I don't know, but I liked the way it looked in the inspiration. My favorite way to clean little cracks and crevices will always be a wet wipe or wet paper towel over a butter knife. It's just one of the best things I've ever found to get in little nooks and crannies and all along my dresser, the nightstands, all of it has this little gap. It gets full of stuff and around the handles and you'll just see me dig it right there. It works wonders. I have this one container of antibacterial wipes you guys see me using throughout this entire video. I still have not managed to empty that container. And I've been cleaning around my house after filming all this too, and I still have not finished off that pack. So don't think that, oh my gosh, she's going through so many, so many antibacterial wipes. No, I didn't even make it halfway through this one container filming, cleaning my entire house, 
and all the furniture and everything with the antibacterial wipes. And I've used tons of different brands. I've used name brand, store brand. I've even bought the like gigantic pack at Sam's that's their brand and it's three huge containers. That lasted me such a long time and they all did such a great job. I really haven't noticed a difference between them. Moving the sheets to the dryer, I will throw in the little bag I have that's got the wool balls in it. I love that and I keep them in the bag so I don't have to chase those. I go back and throw that in, that's why you don't see it. But for the comforter, I will throw the OxyClean and a few beads into the drum and then I will use liquid detergent. This Dawn I'm using as a spot treatment. There's just so many spots on my mattress, not my mattress, my comforter, because Mako's been chewing his skin a lot recently. It's the allergy stuff we're dealing with. It's a whole nightmare, I've talked about it. But there's marks all over this. That's why I'm using the Dawn and it will work beautifully as a stain fighter. This bottle right there, that Hygienic Clean Tide, has anybody noticed there's getting like crunchy and crystallized in the bottom? That's what you just saw me doing was looking in the bottom and shaking it up. It's crystallized and I don't know why. My husband's like, yeah, that happens all the time. I've never once experienced that with my laundry detergent. So I'm curious if you have on the regular, I'm used to Tide Pods and then just normal free and clear. I've never bought that hygienic clean and I was curious if that had anything to do with it and then I'm going to partially make the bed I will put the fitted sheet back on and the flat sheet and then wait for the comforter before I put any of the pillows or anything like that on but at least this will keep the wrinkles out of my sheets Moving into the master bathroom, I'm spraying down the shower head and the sinks, letting those set and soak while I go ahead and clean the lights and the walls and anything that I need to get done from top down as far as dusting goes. The mirror was recently done. I keep up with the mirror because I don't like any spatters or fingerprints or anything. That's one of the things that drives me crazy is if the mirrors are dirty. Going back to the shower head, if you haven't cleaned yours in a while, definitely add it to your list. If you have, but you have a just one of the water streams that just goes off into the distance, that is another sign that you need to actually clean it and just take the two minutes and do it. Don't be like, oh, I'll get to it eventually because then tomorrow you're gonna have two that are doing it or three that are doing it. And that applies to anything, not just your shower head, your faucet in your kitchen. If it gets a little rogue sprayer, just clean it, it takes two minutes. And I'm wetting down my shower doors because I'm gonna show you my favorite way to clean glass shower doors, and that is using the Scrub Daddy Power Paste. This stuff is amazing. Now, it is slightly abrasive, so test a little area first. If you're worried at all, it does come with a Scrub Mommy. I keep mine with it, so that way I would never have to worry about where it went. And I'm scrubbing down this one sink because I need to be able to use it to wet the scrub mommy to be able to use the power paste. But that's why I'm jumping the gun and cleaning this one sink. With the power paste, I will scrub the interior side of the shower glass doors and it works beautifully to get any of the hard water and stuff. We do have very hard water where we live and it leaves little deposits all over. I do clean my shower regularly. If you look to the right, you'll see a squeegee and there is a scrub brush. I keep that full with white vinegar and Dawn and I will scrub my shower almost every time I'm in there. I can't say every time because sometimes I'm in a hurry, but nine times out of 10, I will scrub little bits and pieces of my shower to keep it clean, but it doesn't matter with the hard water. It still gets gross buildup on these doors. So that is where the power paste comes in and it works like magic. I will scrub it down. 
let it sit for just a minute and then rinse it off with the water from the sprayer and it looks so beautiful and if you go behind it and you squeegee it like you'll see me do in a few minutes it's just they look like brand new glass doors every time and when i go to the outside of the doors i will clean it with just normal glass cleaner and they are beautiful absolutely beautiful my shower doors sadly are broken and have been broken for a while and i can't bring myself to put a shower curtain in here i love having the glass see-through doors because i still have my small children they come in they talk to me they ask me things while i'm in the shower and i have a towel and stuff i block everything it's nothing like that but i do prefer to have the see-through i do prefer to have the doors it's just my preference and i have yet to be able to just kill these doors all together and put a shower curtain in we are working on putting in our budget to finally replace these doors thank goodness but i just i couldn't give up my doors for a shower curtain What I'm trying to show here is the up underneath side of your faucet so you could see just how gross it gets under there. I left this one deliberately uncleaned for a little while so it would work and I could show you guys how to clean it for spring cleaning. This one wasn't that bad. I put a cleaner of any kind on there, let it sit for a second, and then use a scrub brush. It doesn't have to be an electric one. Any scrub brush will do and then rinse it down with the water. You'll see some black splatter hit the sink. It was cleaned off really well. There was a good amount of black spots, nothing compared to what came off of the kids faucet, which is weird because I keep up with theirs, but yet theirs was worse than the one that I let sit and I wasn't cleaning deliberately so I could show you how to clean it for spring cleaning. It just, it made no sense to me that this one was kind of mid and theirs that I clean regularly was so gross. Just one glass in, you're already on my mind. When it gets late, I always realize that I need you. Are you thinking about me too tonight? I'm trying to do different things in this bathroom than I did in the other one, so that way you're not seeing the exact same start to finish clean. Like in that one, you saw me snake the drains. I just did that in here because in this one, I need to check for expiration dates. I don't really need to do that in the kids' bathroom as well as I already wiped down their set of drawers, like my set of drawers, which I'm also about to wipe down. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do is to do a few things, still doing them in one place, but doing them in the other, just not filming it. I want to completely redo my organization underneath both bathroom sinks, not the kids, but both of ours. There's zero drawers in my bathroom and that I don't like not having drawers. So I have to make the most, yes, check expiration dates. That's October of last year. And I found one that was even worse, but I don't remember if I show it or not. These baskets have done a great job. That drawer does a good job. I put behind here all like the cotton balls, cotton swabs, all that stuff that stays on my counter in the little bin. I store all the extras behind these little white drawers. And then this top basket gets the adult medication, any alcohol, peroxide, Vicks, stuff like that goes in this one right here. We have a first aid drawer, a hair care drawer, and then the kids meds which even if they're closed all the way, they still leak. That drawer gets disgusting all the time. I've seen these things where they're meant to go in a cabinet and you put all the bottles standing in it and you could pull out the row and turn it. I know I'm probably explaining this really bad, but 
They look really, really cool and I think it would help a lot, but I would have to completely rearrange where I keep everything in here in order to do that. But these drawers, I do like having the first aid drawer. It's easy if the kids need a Band-Aid, they know where to go. If I have to do Gwen's hair every morning for school, this hair drawer, it's got extra hair ties, the little things that cut the little plastic hair ties out. It's just perfect for the drawers. It's the baskets that I'm having a problem with because you see this one to the left. It's just like a massive overflow junk collector and I will get it looking nice by the end of this little clip here, but I think this was filmed about five days ago, maybe four days ago at this point, and the basket is already getting messy, so within another week from now, it's going to be an overflow mess again. So if I don't keep up with it constant, it just looks like that. And I wish there was just more of a way to organize under here. Sweeter than summer wine, baby just hold me tight. Like a drug I am hooked on you. And that makes me say, oh man, you make you feel like paradise. God damn, I think I'm gonna lose my mind. Oh man, you make you feel like paradise. Paradise. I'm taking a mental picture in my mind just to keep this moment till the end of time. Here's that other expiration date. It was from, I think, August of last year. So just really check your expiration dates. And luckily, none of my kids tried to come in here, my older teenagers, and use that. This is my tanning mitt. I couldn't find it. It fell behind, and it's absolutely disgusting. I have bought a new one since then, so just pretend you didn't see that horrible, gross thing. Organization has always been an issue in our house because we have seven people we have two bathrooms. None of the bathrooms have any drawers, so they only have the cabinets. We have one linen closet for the entire house. So one thing in my home is definitely organization and it had to take priority, but even some of the stuff I've come up with hasn't been holding up and like underneath that sink, I really wanna redo that. This is now clean, there's no marks on it. The Dawn is a beautiful thing. If you have yet to add that to your wash yet, just try it if you've got stains, it's amazing. And yes, I did finally get a wedge pillow. It can go either way, it can go like this or it can go tall ways, which is how we've been keeping it is like this on the bed. And I've had very little issues with that gap between the bed and the headboard. I just, I love this thing so much. It's been on my bed for about a little less than a week now and I am actually sleeping better. I'm just really enjoying having that extra added support and when I watch TV at night or edit videos in my bed, it's been really nice. And that makes me sad. Day three, this definitely was not on the list, but day two, I just wanted more time with my family and I definitely was not mentally prepared for the kitchen. Cause yes, this part is the kitchen and the dining room. It is the last part of my spring cleaning list. Plus obviously you see dishes right there. I do have some general tidying to do in here as well, but I just, I was not prepared for the oven cleaning and all of the deep cleaning that has to be done in a kitchen. No, I gave myself that grace, took the time I wanted instead of just dragging through. I was like, forget it, I'm staying happy. Today, I'm ready and prepared to knock this out. I'm 
I'm going slightly out of order because I want to be able to use this faster than later. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you just what I do to the dishwasher and then I will get this running so that way I can use all the dishes in the sink and get them out of my way. But when you open your dishwasher, you'll see this ledge right here gets really, really gross. And then if you look down the side, it even gets more gross down there. Something's stuck there. This whole interior door gets really gunky and nasty. This little ledge right in here between the door and the bottom, see all that built up nasty gunk right there? And in the corner too, that gets really, really gross. And then wherever your filter is, mine is right there. So after I run this cycle, I will take that out and clean it. That way the cleaning cycle gets all the gunk that's in here and it goes down into there. And then I will clean that after this runs its cycle. But if you really look, like these are the holes where the water squirts out in my top row. There's stuff stuck in there. That's not gonna do its job. That's why you have to clean your machines because if you're not cleaning your machines, they can't clean your stuff. This may be a bit excessive, but I don't care. I usually have one big bowl that fits here. I can't find it, so I only have my small ones. So I'm gonna kind of put one back here towards the back where it's really snug in there and one up here towards the front where they're stable. And white vinegar about halfway in each bowl or in the one bowl if you have one that fits right in the center. It's completely optional, but since those were gross, I'm spraying the holes. It's just Dawn Power Wash. And I'm gonna gently close that one down here and move that out of the way. And then this entire nasty little line, spray the crap out of that with the Dawn Power Wash. Maybe a little on that bar too. Close that up, okay, and then on the door, these I will clean after, and I'll wipe the door down, but you know what? It's getting a little more too, I don't care. Mine does not have a self-clean feature, so I'm gonna stick it on a normal, actually, yeah, let's do normal, and it doesn't need the dry. The tops of my cabinets are not that bad to clean because I keep paper towels up here and it gets kind of greasy right along the edge of my cabinets, which is what I'm showing you. But as far as all of the spot above my cabinetry, there's paper towels or you can use newspaper. I've done that too. And it will catch all the grease and dust and all of that that gets trapped up there. Now, when it comes to the actual cabinet doors themselves, I've done a bunch of different ways of cleaning these. Everything from a rag and a multi-surface cleaner to like I'm doing today with the antibacterial wipes. Cleaning in, in this way makes it where you can get in all the little nooks and crannies and the little designs all over the doors. I do like to mop my cabinet doors. That's more like a quicker clean. It's not really a deep clean thing because you can't get into the nooks and crannies, but I do also very much like to mop my cabinets. I'm going more for the deep clean side, plus as with the walls, I don't have the extra replacement head for my mop right now, and I refuse to put the one that goes on the floor onto my walls or my cabinets. I won't do that. So for this particular one, I'm using the antibacterial wipes. That way I can open the doors, get around all the edges, get in the little pieces of the handles. Just really get in there and clean them. You can use wood cleaner, Whatever you want to do to clean your cabinets, it really will work. The top of my refrigerator is a catch-all. Yes, that was an empty cookie container. Those are M&Ms from Easter, an empty jelly bean container, broken cat toy, old Christmas cups, 
you name it, there's all kinds of just random crap that gets thrown up here. I used to put all the things that I didn't want the kids to take without asking for up here. That didn't work because they would take them anyways when I wasn't around and wasn't looking. So all that gets hidden elsewhere. So now this is just kind of like extra stuff that gets thrown up there to get out of the way and then temporarily forgotten about like that half a bag of M&Ms that were Easter. The kids have since eaten them, but this is where they went. And then cleaning down the walls that have any kind of spatter where a backsplash would be. We don't have one. We will eventually have one. We do have the tile that we picked out for the backsplash sitting out in the garage and it's been there for well over a year. We'll eventually get it put up, but that's just kind of how it works in our home. We start something and we don't necessarily finish it right away. The dishwasher was finished, so the first thing is to take out the containers. I was making sure they weren't hot. Sometimes it can still be a little warm. Ours weren't, it was fine. And I will use one of those bowls later on. I'm using some tweezers and trying to pick out whatever was stuck up in there because it's still in there. And even to this day, it's still in there. It just keeps getting pushed into the little cavity that's inside of that piece. I still can't get it out. I'm working on that. But then wiping down that middle nasty groove I talked about, it cleaned it up beautifully and I just had to really scrub the corners where the gaskets are. That part was still a little bit stuck. Now the filter was beyond disgusting. And I had probably cleaned the dishwasher filter about two, three months ago, something like that. It was still so gross and I cleaned around this little piece because that also had like a hazy sheen of something nasty. I cleaned that, but look at just this. And then I had to get it open, kind of like pull it apart. There was a corn kernel that was stuck in there. There was some kind of herb that was stuck. I had to get a knife or a fork and like really dig down deep in there. It took quite a while to clean the filter, but it's so worth it because like I said, if you're not cleaning and taking care of your machines, they can't do their job. Your washer will break faster, your dryer will break, your dishwasher will break. Just take care of your machines. to the microwave this is not a spring clean this is just a normal deep clean in my home because it gets so gross so quickly it is a very clean fast like five minute clean this is how gross mine is to start with so you could see there's stuff caked all the way up on the top on the door on the back it's really gross i'm using one of them same bowls from earlier finishing off my white vinegar sadly so that was a problem but i put that in there and i will run it for about four minutes while that's doing that i'm going to take these little vents off the bottom down here and get those sprayed down with some dawn power wash The microwave is still running, so I'm gonna jump in real quick and just talk for a second. As you saw, I ran out of white vinegar. I thought I had a whole nother bottle this size. I can't find it. I'm not going to do a whole nother day on this kitchen. So there are two other pieces of the kitchen that I will not be doing, but I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do them, and that's cleaning your Keurig, and if you have one of those right there, that type of kettle, I use this for cleaning that too. I'm gonna tell you how. For the kettle, what I do is it's got little marks on it for measurements. I will go up to like the two to even the three with the white vinegar and then I will put about two cups of water in there. I will let this go on the high setting for boil and let it boil in there for a good few minutes and it'll get all that weird gross like residue that gets on the bottom. I will let that, it just takes it right off, wash with soap and water, this one's done. Coffee pots are a little more tricky. You take white vinegar and you put it back in wherever your water reservoir is, and you're going to run your machine a good three times or four times through to get the vinegar through it to clean it, and then you're gonna go through a whole tank of fresh water right behind it to get the vinegar out. I have a dual-sided one, so I have to run it both, a whole thing here and a whole thing here, 
and also clean out in here. Yeah, my son left a coffee pot because those get really, really gross, but they are sharp. And see that gets really gross, so be careful. But there's something about you, something about you I like, about you I like. Once the timer goes off, just open the door, have your rag ready, take the glass dish out and the other little circle thing, take that out and start wiping with a clean, dry rag. Everything just falls off because of the steam. It works beautifully. You can actually just do this with plain water because the steam will do the same thing. I like the vinegar because I use it on the tray. Right here, you see me pouring it on there and then scraping off all the extra built-on gunk. But you can do this with just plain water, water with some lemon juice, put some lemon juice in the white vinegar. However you wanna do it, it's mostly about the steam breaking off all the stuff on the walls. That's all it's really about. But the whole process works so well, it takes literally like five minutes to scrub down the entire microwave and it just looks so much better. You don't have any weird smells when you're cooking in it. It's just a fantastic, easy trick for cleaning your microwave. Now I'm gonna scrub these little vents. The brush I'm using came with one of my Ninja cookers. It's fantastic, it gets in the little grooves, but it's not damaging, I love that. These vents I've actually dropped behind my oven before. I think it was like two years ago in one of my videos and I had to pull out the whole oven. It was a whole mess. So just be very careful when you're putting these back up under here because they can very quickly slide to the back and then you're gonna have to go retrieving them like I've done in the past. And then up underneath the microwave is really, really gross from everything splattering from the oven. So while you're down there, just go ahead and wipe that too and save yourself the trouble. I wipe under here fairly frequently, but it was still pretty gross. So if you don't keep up with that, make sure you have a degreaser on hand because you might need to break down some gunk that's stuck up there. Now I'm going to work on deep cleaning the countertops and the easiest way to do this is to take everything off. Then I've got a kitchen scraper. It's not my little two-sided one. This is just a flat one and I will scrape down around all of the edges to make sure I have anything that's been behind like my knives and just really get it all off there so there's no little pieces sitting in the cleaner. This Lysol Kitchen Pro, it's antibacterial and it's a degreaser. This stuff is phenomenal. I will say it is very strong, so air it out for a little bit if you can, but this cleaner, I had a really gross, greasy mess to clean up. I put the tiniest bit of it and it was gone. It was like magic in a bottle. But like I said, this stuff is very, very potent. When I'm cleaning my countertops, I like to use something that's antibacterial. This Lysol spray says it only needs to sit for about 10 seconds to disinfect. Most of the cleaners, if they're antibacterial, say they need to sit for about 10 minutes. I did let this one sit for a good 10 minutes anyways, even though it didn't require it. And now I'm going with my kitchen blade and I'm scraping every single inch of my countertop. I'm doing the glass top as well. I've recently deep cleaned that, so I was just gonna go with this method for today. But I do love to use the power paste on that or they make specific glass top cleaners and polishers. All of those things work really, really well too if you want a thorough deep clean on your glass top. And then you'll see that the kitchen scraper caught something there. I don't know what that whiteness was, but it got that off my countertops too. And then I will go behind it and wipe everything down with a microfiber. Compare thee when no one ever ever could 
could come close, look around, but I can't see. That is usually just how it goes. Brought a new horizon. Opened up our doors to something more. Spun me round and you shook me. Got me tainted to the core. So tell me, tell me, tell me what to do. While cleaning the island, somehow I chipped my razor blade and I don't have any more replacements, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. But now I need to put everything back on my counters. I'm gonna antibacterial everything as much as I can. And as far as like this thing right here, my water faucet, it's stainless steel, so I'm gonna clean it the same way that I would my refrigerator or anything like that. I can also use like the Wayman's stainless steel cleaner. I can use that and like really get a good polish and it will get the fingerprints to stay away longer. It'll help it stay shinier longer, but honestly, it's just not worth it to me. I have to clean this too much anyways with how many people are in the house. So I just stick with the spray way and go that way for cleaning all of my stainless steel. The knife block also need to be wiped down because if you look in between each knife, it actually does get really gross in there. And then my Sensi, it's white, you see everything. So this does need to be wiped down more frequently too. I have a few other Scentsy burners. I had one that looked like a mason jar. I kept that on my counters for a while. I have a stitch one. I have several, but for some reason in the kitchen, I just like the classic white. I think it looks really good. This tray area, I've thought about switching it up. I've seen on Pinterest where you take one of those brown, like almost wicker style baskets, and I would put the utensils, the oil containers, and the knife block in it and put it on like that back corner where the knife block's currently sitting. I don't know necessarily how I feel about it. I think with the shape of my knife block, instead of it being straight up and tall, it's really elongated. I don't think that would necessarily work in my kitchen unless I picked a different knife block. And then that would leave this counter completely bare. So I'm not really sure if I wanna try that yet, but it is something that I am thinking about. And here's the knife trick again. Look at how much crap came out from in between my stove and the countertop. And if you really get down in there and clean all the way down, it's so gross. I do that every now and then, but honestly, I avoid that project at all cost of pulling out my stove because the last time I did it, oh, it took me forever <laughs> and I really don't want to do it. And now moving back down to the lower cabinets, I'm treating them the exact same way that I did the top, but down here under your cabinets, you have your kickboards. My kickboards are disgusting. They need to be repainted or just completely changed out altogether. But either way, clean your kickboards too while you're down there. I got your smile going on repeat You're the star of my movie But now it's done, still stuck in my seat And getting off easy Like I'm doing time, yeah, without parole Got me flirting with disaster But I'm all in, gotta go for gold So tell me, tell me, tell me what to do When nothing, nothing, no one ever comes close to you For the longest time, I've been trying to find someone like you, but I keep crashing back into all the things that you would do. For the longest time, I've been out of my mind, trying to lose every single 
the cabinets really didn't take as long as it would appear that they do. I'm mostly just taking my time getting all the little nooks and crannies, especially the more frequently used cabinets. Like this one I'm working on right here is our trash cabinet. Our trash cans are in that bottom one. Our silverware is in the drawer above it. So this one is opened a lot and it gets really gross being right here on the counter where people will open the trash can and drag stuff down into it from off that countertop. So certain ones of these cabinets, I'm taking a little extra time that's even beyond what would be deep cleaning. So that's why it looks like it's taking longer. It's just because I'm really taking my time on certain pieces and specifically certain cabinets more than others. Yeah, as you see me kind of dance, I do have my music on pretty loud and I'm just plowing through all of the cleaning. That is my favorite way to clean is to just put on some pretty loud music and sing and dance and just have a good old time. And now like wax on, wax off Mr. Miyagi over here while I clean underneath my island because of all the feet and stuff that get kicked down here. And my son came home with his girlfriend and we were talking about prom because this was the night before prom. We were making sure he had everything ready and that they both had everything they need and going over all their plans. And it was just a really cute and sweet thing. And then moving into the stainless steel I'm going to make sure I do that. And again, no, I'm not bringing out the Waymans and dealing with where you got to polish it in one direction and scrub it in the other. And it's just, it's too much and it's a pain. So there was no way I was actually going to break out the real stainless steel cleaner. I'm just going to stick with the spray away and give everything a, like an extra thorough scrub more than I normally would since I am deep cleaning but I'm not pulling out the straight stainless steel cleaner, not happening. Oh, but I am gonna take a toothpick. This is the handle on my oven. Just take a look at yours if you haven't and look at how much little crap is in there and clean that out. Isn't it my birthday yet? Cause I gotta say, you're looking like a gift for me. Wrapped up nice and neat, baby. Get in my way now, don't be shy. We'll be here dancing day and night. Get in my groove now, don't be shy. Cause I got this list of my favorite things. You could be the part where it all begins. You could be the first and the second and the third and the rest of it. I love this handy little gadget. It gets underneath of your appliances and then it's just a little microfiber thing. You could pull off of here and wash. Look at how much stuff it actually collects. And then you could just wet a paper towel and it will work to pick up every bit of this. No need for a dustpan, breaking out the broom and everything. You're gonna do the floors later. Just wet a paper towel and let it help you grip the stuff. And then I went underneath the fridge. Surprisingly enough, there was barely anything under there. That's like one almond something else and then some pet hair. But underneath the stove was a lot worse than underneath the refrigerator. And for some reason, I kind of expected this to be worse. I don't know why. But I really did. And then on to the oven. I was dreading doing this the whole time. And I don't know why, because I wasn't doing the entire oven. You could see a little white part all the way to the right inside my oven. I cleaned it all here weeks ago because there was a spill. So I didn't need to do the oven, just the really gross oven door. And this is the power paste again. It does amazing. Be very careful when you're cleaning your glass on your door in here because you can shatter it. That is a fear, legit fear of mine, is cleaning this to the point of breaking it because I've heard how delicate it is and how easy you can do that. If anyone has done that, please let me know. But I am just really, really careful about how I clean my oven door. And the power paste has always been one of the best things that I have found. I will sit here and scrub this for a while. As you can tell, I'm going and going. I don't remember how long that clip is because I have cut it so it doesn't show me the original time anymore. But I was down here for a good few minutes thoroughly cleaning this oven door. Could be a one of the things 
The sink is also being done with the power paste. If you have not tried this yet, strictly because you see the price tag of this item, honestly, ignore that. I paid, I believe, $9 in Walmart for the container, but every time I buy one of these, it lasts months, and I can clean so much with it. You saw, I did the oven, the shower doors, I'm doing the sink, I could have done my glass top, I chose not to, but this container lasts a long time, and it's so versatile, but it cleans so, so well at the exact same time. So if it's been the price tag on it that's scaring you, ignore that. It is totally worth it, and I will say that a thousand times in my videos. And then same process as earlier for cleaning the faucet head underneath. It was so nasty. And I'm also cleaning where I keep my scrub daddy or mommy in my sink. That little thing was disgusting. It was like almost that orangey color gross slime that gets behind it where it suction cups to my sink. Highly disgusting, but a little bit of Dawn and that was gone. And this entire sink looks beautiful. I do have the tabs that go into the garbage disposal to freshen it too and a fresh scrub mommy to add to the sink just to make everything all nice and fresh and new again. When you were leaving, I need you even more than I did before. You had the last word when you walked out the door. You drive me crazy, I want you to stay here. Now I'm here alone. I hate this party and I don't know anyone. We get drunk and we fight. The last thing I always do is my floors. You are seeing me vacuum the floors, but I am not actually scrubbing them. That is my husband's job, and I no longer do them without him. You could see his knee over here to the bottom right-hand corner. He had just gotten home from work and was resting for a few minutes, and then he was going to go behind me and do all of the mopping. So that's why you are not seeing that in this video. But the last thing I always do is the floors, especially if I'm doing any kind of deep cleaning, it is always from top to bottom. Three days later and 9 p.m. tonight, I am finally done. I think I have well over an hour's worth of footage once I go back and edit this for you guys to actually have been able to clean with me. No, I have not checked off every single item on my spring cleaning list, nor do I care, and I'm not gonna fret about it, and neither should you. This is going to be an editing nightmare for me, but it is totally worth it because I have wanted to do a video like this for a while, and it's been almost a year, I think, since the last one I did. So I am more than happy to do it. If you guys enjoy videos like this one, let me know down below so I can make them a little more frequently. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.